Hi, welcome Hi back. There. I hope you guys are having a great summer like we do. And this year is 150 for uh, Canada, so there were lots of interesting uh, activities going on in Ottawa area. Yeah, I big wonder, party. Right? I wonder if any of you have made here. Yeah, leave us a comment down below. I had a great summer too. I went on a, a canoeing adventure, so I had to travel super light. Basically, I had three interesting brewing experiences. Because I couldn't bring a travel guy one, uh, I had to pack so light, I had to makeshift a guy one with a sugar bowl in the lid. I also, when I was in the outback on the canoe, brewing grandpa style, which is always an option. We and have those pictures on social media, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, and finally I used a western teapot in the end, and that was one of my first experiences brewing a Chinese tea in a western teapot. You know, you can wing it. Wherever you are, you can brew your tea. If you had some interesting experiences with tea this summer, leave some comments down below. Leave some links to your pictures and stuff, we'd love to see them. So because I had to pack light, I could only bring one type of tea. But today we're going to talk about all six tea categories. Right. What are the six tea categories and how do we define them? And we're also going to dive into some uh, gray zones and some interesting discussions about yep. it. It's going to be fun. Let's get started. So just want to quickly share with you guys the tea we're enjoying while shooting this video. This is a uh, Yan Cha uh, called Shui Xian. My Robbed favorite. It. Right, mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind of a wulong. Yeah, and we it happens to be the same tea we were sipping the day we uh, TJ released, uh, TJ of World Tea Podcast released his video that we shot down at World Tea Expo in Las Vegas. We got the link to that down below, so uh, check that out. It was a great video and we had good fun with TJ. So, as many of you know, there are six major tea categories. Green, white, yellow, oolong, black, and dark. But let's wait a moment right here and yeah. figure out what is the origin of the tea categories. Yeah, fair enough. So, the tea categories emerged, started to emerge, during Ming Qing Dynasty. And when I say started to emerge, people were drinking tea before then, all over China and even other parts of the world. But during this time is when the processes started to gel and form. And they were different region to region and place to place. And this is where we start to see the modern tea categories, the six that I just named, start to emerge. Yeah. So I just want to add a little bit. In terms of the Ming Qing Dynasty, it's about uh, uh, the 17th, the 17th 17, century. That's right, 1600s. All, yeah, yeah, all the way to the 19th, and 20, early uh, 20th century. So um, why I want to mention this is because there are lots of confusions, yeah. right? Sometimes you will hear people say, oh, my family has been making this tea for thousands of years. But saying, it's not, none of the teas we have nowadays is so ancient. That's right. The process is always changing. That's right. And the other area of confusion is because these tea categories originated in China, as tea started to move out and flourish around the world, uh, the rest of the world started borrowing these uh, these names, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of confusion around that. You might taste a tea from Nepal or Laos, and it's called a black tea or an oolong tea, but if you're a Chinese tea drinker, uh, you may wonder, well, why is the flavor so different? It doesn't taste like a black tea profile. Yeah, and we will dive into that discussion later once we figure out what the tea categories really are. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got these six categories, but what does it mean to be a green tea or a black tea? What's the big difference, right? Uh, and it all comes down to how the fresh leaf is processed. Uh, that is essentially what defines the category. And it gets confusing because you've got these colors, green and black and white. And uh, is it related to the leaf color? Is it the liquor color? Essentially, no. It's all about how the tea is processed. That's right. And it's just a one of the angle to categorize teas. True. Just like how I uh, describe myself, right? I can say I'm a woman, that's from the gender perspective. Or I can say I'm yellow, that's from the skin color perspective. So similar with tea, from the process perspective, we define that as red, uh, black teas and oolong or mm -hmm. dark tea. Mm -hmm. But if you categorize that from altitude perspective, it will be plain tea or um, high, mountain tea. high mountain teas, or from the plucking time, spring tea, oh, yeah. summer tea. Okay, so you've got these different angles about how you can look at it, but right. process or the six major categories is pretty much the most popular. Yeah, though there are still debates about how to categorize the teas under those six categories. 
uh, most professionals and experts agree on this, and that's one of the reasons it's the widely known categorizing. Right on. Wait. Great. So let's talk about these tea categories a little bit. What exactly is a uh, black tea? What are the differences between that and green tea, etc.? Yeah, I usually uh, talk about the tea categories in the order of uh, green, white, yellow, oolong, black, and dark, right. because they're nicely lined up in terms of the uh, oxidation level from the least to the most. And let's start with the uh, green tea. So green tea is a tea category that doesn't go through any oxidation process. On the contrary, it actually has the kill green process right. that use heat to stop any possible oxidation. So it will preserve what's in the fresh leaf, in the finished leaf. Right. And next you have white tea. White tea is a really simple process. They basically pluck, wither, and dry it. That's it. So there's no kill green process. So that means as soon as it's plucked, it technically starts to slightly oxidize. Right. And it continues to do that throughout its life. Yeah. And there's another tea category known as yellow tea. It's mm. less known, but um, it's a really interesting one. It's slightly oxidized. Right. And one of the steps is called a yellowing. And it's very unique. Yeah, we get a lot of questions about this yellowing process. And it's a bit of an interesting step because it actually comes after the kill green but it's a step that purposely uh, induces oxidation after the kill green step. The goal is to evenly yellow the leaf. Very tricky. Right. That's why it's rare. And move on to my favorite category, oolong tea. So uh, oolong tea refers to a bunch of teas that are partially oxidized. You might have those lightly oxidized, uh, oxidized tea. Uh, sometimes people call that uh, green oolong, mm -hmm. like uh, Taiwanese oolong, uh, Shanling Xi. And sometimes you will have those heavily oxidized, like uh, Oriental Beauty or Bai Hao Wulong. It, actually, the oxidation level is almost close to black tea. Right, it's, it's really still, pushing. Yeah, it's still in the Wulong area. And uh, during the process, there's one step called uh, uh, Yao Qing or mm -hmm. uh, shaking. It actually uh, brews the leaves to encourage the oxidation. And by this step, the aroma and the flavor got enhanced. Right, so the next one would be black tea. And black tea has a step in its process where, they, where it's rolling. It's sort of like a really aggressive version of Yao Tsing. Rather than simply bruising the leaf, they actually roll it. Um, get all the juices in a state where they can interact with oxygen and what we call fully oxidize the tea. Yes, and last but not the least is dark tea, which refers to um, teas that has the post-fermented process. So this post-fermented process usually happens in the later part of the whole process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes uh, weeks and sometimes it takes months. It's basically use heat and moisture to encourage those uh, bio... Yeah, microbial fermentation. Micro uh, right. Popular teas in this category are, th category are things like Shu Puar, but there's others like Liu Bao Cha, uh, Fu Zhuan. Fu Zhuan, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, so that was a quick look at the six Chinese tea categories. Right, the process defines the categories, and at the same time, process primarily defines the taste of the tea. That's right, and that's a big reason we're doing this video. A lot of times when we talk about teas, we hear origins, we hear cultivars. Terroir. Yep, everything. But actually, it is the process that de mostly decides the taste of the tea. Mm -hmm. So how do cultivar and terroir and all of those other aspects play in? Are they important at all? Absolutely. They're all in the taste, in the leaves. It's all there. But it needs more experienced taste buds and extensive knowledge to decode those informations. And with a careful appraisal, uh, you can understand the altitude, the origin, the cultivar, even the storage and the brewing. Right, so, so they're all important, they all play a part, but I guess the process is what's really going to bring out the flavor. That's going to be the first thing that hits you. That's right. So let's take uh, Longjing as an example, because that's one of the most uh, popular uh, Chinese tea in the West. Mm, true. So it's a green tea, and it's from the uh, Hangzhou area, uh, Zhejiang province. But in the market right now, <laughs> any... Uh, tea that is pressing that shape, even though it's not from Zhejiang province at all, it's called Longjing. Mm -hmm. No matter where you bought it, you can buy it in Hangzhou, it doesn't change, right? 
So if origin or cultivar is the primary factor in terms of taste, people should easily detect if it's a real one or a fake one. But the reality is the opposite. Right. So you get it. You get a tea that's a long gin that's from somewhere else. So it comes from other terroir. Who knows about the yeah. cultivar? But you still get that big aroma and that fresh, delicious flavor that you expect. Yeah, that comes from the pan fire process in the uh, right. green tea process. So, uh, but there are also other uh, uh, way to do green teas in China. Like uh, there is a heat dry, mm -hmm. not quite roasting level, but uh, right. more gentle than uh, pan fired. And you also have sun dried or steamed. Right. So these are sort of like um, green tea. Uh, yeah, four Chinese types of Chinese green tea categories. Yeah. That's right. right. So that reminds me of uh, we have a Dian Lu, which is typically, I think, um, heat dried. Yeah, heat dried. But we got a pan fired one this year, and you do see that big aroma popping out. Yeah, it's quite different, and right, the rest right. are the same. It's the same uh, origin terroir and same uh, cultivar, right. but. Right. If you do that, it's really obviously different. And I haven't had a Chinese steam tea myself, but I'm going to guess it would be more umami, a little bit more brothy, fishy, like a Japanese yeah, green yeah. tea. Yeah, you totally oh, got cool, it. Cool. All right, so questions. Uh, puar, dark tea. It fits under the dark tea category, but a lot of there's a lot of debate about that. Some folks think it should have its own category, and uh, you know, what do you think? Yeah, I just want to mention something first. That is a marketing factor. So uh, it's not rare nowadays to hear people think their uh, teas are so unique. It's not just in dark tea category, even right. other teas, green, mm -hmm. or they, because every tea has their unique process. They will say, oh, we don't fit in the categories, we're, you know, marketing plays a big deal. So in terms of Puar, I think a shoe is definitely a dark tea because it has a long post-fermented process. And in Chinese, we call six uh, major tea category, Liu Da Cha Lei. So it kind of implies there are minor tea categories as well, like a compressed tea or uh, sanded or blended, like a jasmine tea, hua cha. Uh, so Shen Puer can put in the compressed tea category because it's usually made right. into cakes or breaks. Right, but in the major tea categories, we stuff it into the dark tea category, probably more for convenience. Yeah. Right. Reminds me of an article we, uh, we read that Jeff Norman wrote about the categories and how him and Skippy You'll check the link below and see his article and you'll know who Skippy is, but how he uh, kind of jiggled them around to help us understand that too. And he got into another interesting aspect, which is uh, categories that other countries are borrowing the Chinese tea categories, but you might taste them and think, whoa, this is a black tea, but the profile is really wonky. Even the liquor yeah. color is not quite yeah, right. Yeah, like the one we uh, tried a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the leaves are really, the leaf, dry leaves are close to white tea, the taste is in the middle, it's more similar to Darjeeling. Yeah, the really liquor delicious. is pale, <laughs> but they mark that as black tea, so uh, yeah. it's quite confusing. Yeah, yeah, so um, be open-minded uh, when you're drinking teas from other countries. Uh, ask lots of questions from the uh, vendor or the producer about how the process is done and use those, uh, use what you learn to add to your tasting profile, you know, uh, your taste is right. If it doesn't taste like a black tea, it probably isn't. Doesn't mean it's not a delicious tea though. That's right. Uh, uh, when it comes to Chinese tea, the taste usually tells you which category it goes. It's pretty straight. Yeah, it's in Chinese tea, you kind of have to, you can be demanding of a black tea. If Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, there's more, they're more strict in China about how they categorize and how they process their tea. Yeah, and what's the desire to flavor and there. Right. Yeah. But when you're tasting teas from other countries, be open-minded, ask questions, uh, taste lots of tea, and yeah, and enjoy your uh, tea journey. Right, so that was a quick look at the six Chinese tea categories. We got into some discussion about some gray zones and, and how uh, category is related to process, and right. process is the big player in the flavor of your tea. We're going to do videos about each of these six Chinese tea categories where we get into more detail. Yeah, give us a thumb up. And uh, leave some comments below so we know which is the next uh, video. Yeah, what should we start with? Right, and the questions that we can cover in future videos. Right on. Any tea categories at all or that you have questions about, you leave them down below. We'll answer them in the series. Right. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you'll know when those videos come out. If you happen to be in Toronto on September the 23rd, we're going to have an Ultimate Pour Seminar. We will be sharing some hardcore knowledge, some information yeah. about today's 
uh, for marketing China as well as tasting amazing teas. Tasting some teas together with you. That's going to be yeah. a really good time. We get into awesome details there. So hope to see you there if you're in the Toronto area. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Next time. Until next time. Bye bye. Bye. Taste. Yeah. Taste. <laughs> and process also defines. Ah, oh, what? I think we gotta start over. Yeah.